In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of a 19-inch LED 720p Insignia television set. Oh, and a wall mount. So let's get to it. Now I got both of these at Best Buy, my favorite store. Now if you know anything about Best Buy, you know that Insignia is their house brand. So Best Buy has these TVs made for them. Now the model number on this is NS-19E310A13. And they're actually discontinuing this model and bringing in the new version, which is also a 19-inch LED Insignia TV, but just the newer version. So I got this on clearance from Best Buy for $100. So it's really a good deal. The mount actually costs $19.99 or $20. So the mount, which is basically just a piece of metal, costs about one-fifth the price of the television set. But that's just the way it goes. So for $120, I got myself a television set with a wall mount. Now, the reason I'm buying a 19-inch TV is because I'm taking one of the rooms in my house and I'm going to make it my studio. Now, I've mentioned this in some previous videos before. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I do a lot of reviews on streaming media boxes, those little boxes that enable your dumb television to become a smart television. So I'm going to be doing those reviews on this TV. Now before we actually jump into the TV unboxing, let's unbox the wall mount first. And I don't think I actually need my cutter. It'll just slip out the top here. And it probably is just a piece of metal with some screws. Okay, actually a couple pieces of metal. Okay. Now this mount will accommodate a 13 to 26 inch television set. Obviously 19 inches falls right in the middle of that. It says down here it supports up to 30 pounds. This is definitely not 30 pounds. And it mounts the TV 0.94 inches from the wall. So that's fine in my setup. I'm not gonna need it to pivot or anything like that. Having it stationary is just fine. Now over here you have your documentation what you need to hook it up. And let's hope that all of the hardware is there. You get some screws and some washers and whatnot. That's your mounting hardware. And then here is the mount itself, which mounts to the TV. And then I think it, I think this part mounts to the wall. And then you slide, if this is on the wall, this is on the TV, you slide TV onto it and then it will mount it securely. And then this piece here, not quite sure what it does, but it's a locking bar it says. So obviously it locks it into place somehow. So it looks like I have all the hardware which is good. So let's put this to the side. So let's open this thing up and I'm gonna get it from the top here. All right, first thing on the top here is the remote control. We'll look at that a little bit more in depth in a second. Let's just get everything out of the box. Next thing up here is the wall adapter. And this is actually an interesting one because it's pretty big. It's a pretty big wall adapter. So I'll definitely have to put that at the end of the power strip. Otherwise, it's gonna take up a lot of space. Let's put that to the side. And get some of the styrofoam out of here. And grab the panel. So here is the 19 inch panel itself. And we'll get that out of the plastic in a second. But the one thing I do really like about this, and it's going to be perfect for filming, is that it is a matte screen. As you can see there. But we'll open that a little bit more in a second. All right, what else do we have in here? We have the base, and again, I will be using this initially to set this up, and then when I mount it to the wall, I'll just store it away. Have some documentation down here, and some screws for the base, and then 
couple of AAA batteries for the remote. So let's put that to the side. And that, I think, is... And probably is one more piece of the base in here, but let's see. Maybe, maybe not. No, that's it. So let's put all this to the side. All right, let's take a look at the remote here. Let's get it out of the bag. Very basic remote here. Let's put the AAA batteries in there. Chang Hong batteries, never heard of those before. Probably a Chinese brand. There we go. Let's close this up. So the remote is actually very light. And you have a lot of functions here. You have your power button, your TV button, your video, HDMI, accessory button, your numeric keypad. You have your selector area here where you have an enter and your directional pad here. And everything's very rubberized. You have a menu button, an exit button, an info button, and a home button. Input, channel list, favorite, CCD, volume up and down, mute button, channel up and down, sleep, zoom, MTS, SAP, picture. Then you have your play controls here and an audio button there. And then you have your insignia branding on the bottom. It's mostly a matte plastic. There is some, not high gloss, but some gloss to the plastic there. But again, mostly matte plastic. And there you see the side view of it. So it's more beefy at the base. So it fits nicely in your hand. And then right where your finger goes, it gets smaller. It also has some feet on the bottom. So you can set it down and it won't wobble. Let's look at the base here. And this should be pretty straightforward. This shows you that this is the front of the TV here. And let's pull this plastic off. And again, if your plastic has a plastic protector on it, you know that that plastic is high gloss. So I've seen shinier plastic, so it's nice that it's not the shiniest, but it is a high gloss plastic base. Now let's get the panel itself. And you have your insignia branding down here. You've got a decent sized bezel all the way around and hopefully it'll get focused. It's, this camera has difficulty focusing on big monolithic black slabs. So up front here you have a couple of LEDs down here and we'll figure out what that is. It's Energy Star rated, $4 of cost over a year span. So we'll take that off when we take the plastic off. It does have plastic all the way around, so again, you have the high gloss plastic bezel. This is how thin the TV is. It's not the thinnest TV around, but that's fine. I'm gonna be mounting this on a wall, and it's perfect for my needs. Also up top here, you see you have some buttons, you have your menu input, volume up and down, channel, down and up, and then your power button. You also have some venting back here. On this side, you have your ports. You have your component in, you have your composite in, you have an HDMI and a USB. And then you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is your audio out. This is the back of the TV here. Now, they make two different models of this. One has a DVD player in it, and one does not. This obviously does not have the DVD player in it, but if it did, that's where they'd put it in. So they just make one shell for it, one casing for it, and then depending on the model you get, you either get the DVD player or you don't. I don't really want a DVD player in this, so I opted for this model, and again, the price couldn't beat 100 bucks for it. Now you have your antenna or cable in here, your digital output coaxial. You have a VGA port here and also a audio port here to go along with your VGA. You have another HDMI port here and then you have your DC in here. So let's get the plastic off of this bottom here and I'm assuming I'll be able to take this off. When I mount this to the wall, I'll be able to unscrew this no problem. So and we'll get the plastic off the bezel in a second. Uh, just looking on the bottom here, you have your speakers, stereo speakers on the bottom. 
So let's put this into the base. Very simple. Just slide it right in. And all I'll have to do is mount it with the appropriate screws. And I'm assuming it's these two because this is for the wall mount right here. So this is the bottom. All I have to do is put my two screws in here. You can see that it has five rubberized feet down here. So it's not going to scratch anything you put it on. But uh, let me put those two screws in and I'll join up with you when I'm done with that. All right, there we go. It's all set up on the base and the base doesn't move at all. It doesn't swivel at all. So it's pretty much one position, but not a problem for me because again, the ultimate goal is to put this on a wall and it's very light and movable if you need to move it to the right or to the left when it's not mounted to the wall. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing that, but let me pull the plastic off of the bezel here. To reveal the glossy bezel. And let's pull the energy guide off of here. So down here you see the red LED, and this is probably the IR sensor here, I would imagine. So I'm going to use the remote and I'm going to turn it on for the first time. Now obviously I'm not connected to anything, so it's probably going to give me some fuzzy channels here. And we have a blinking red light says, please wait, choose your menu language. Obviously I'm speaking English, so let's walk through this. I'm just going to hit enter on the remote here. Choose your time setting, mode auto. Sounds good to me. Time zone Pacific, actually I am Eastern time zone. Daylight savings on and the year and everything's off, but that's probably because I chose auto. We'll see if it actually updates itself or I'm going to have to do that manually. It's quite possible I'll have to do it manually because I haven't decided yet if I'm actually going to hook this up to cable or not. Yeah, it says if automatic options are automatically set by TV source. So that would be the cable. So that's going to pretty much do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.